Hello, brothers and sisters. The title of the message today is The Path of Church. Number one, preview. Re Revelation chapter 1, verse 10 through 20. We can divide the New Testament into three eaters. First, Jesus. Second, the apostles. And third, the church. We can also divide the ear of apostles into three parts. Peter's time, Paul's time, and John's time. Peter opened the door of salvation. Paul, with the aid of his epistles, made the church grow up. And through John, the brothers became united together. If there had only been Peter, we could have grown up in Christ um, because of St. Paul's work and ministry. Uh, we could experience the growth and maturity in Christ in Paul. In the time of John, the brothers became united together into a perfect an inseparable relationship, like father and son, like the husband and wife. In the same manner and pattern, God's revelations have flown like the river through the stream of life. Our spiritual and physical life is the same. In our physical life, we are born, grew up, and then we are able to get married and have children. In Christ, through our spiritual life, we were called by God, grown, grew up, became his bride, and united together with him as we have become his church. We experience spiritual growth in the body of Christ every day. This is God's ultimate purpose. And that's why God called us, letting us Enjoy the abundant content that is hidden in his life, the church, and in the body of Christ, and in his kingdom. Everything is possible through church life. From time of salvation, we started to obtain everything. After salvation, the kingdom of God was gradually revealed to us. The trees grow up. Flowers bloom, and in an appropriate time, trees will ultimately bear fruits. After a child receives a proper education, he or she is equipped with various qualities required to be a member of society. This is why in their childhood, in their early age, they went through these difficulties and disciplines. We are called by God, and in Christ, we become members of a new society. If you don't grow up normally and become mature, we cannot lead a normal social life. If we have to uh, receive the salvation and go through the procedure of growth, by normal procedure, only then we can lead a normal social life. This is an unchanging truth, but it is a simple and natural fact. If we just receive salvation and then if we don't grow up, we cannot become mature and lead a normal social life. If an infant is born and cannot grow up, it's impossible for him to enjoy a certain social life. If you don't grow up and become mature normally, we can't lead a normal social life in Christ, in the new society either. We have to go through normal salvation and normal growth. Only then we'll be able to lead a normal social life. This is an unchanging truth. It's quite simple and a natural fact. When we eat God's words, we can grow up spiritually but if you don't, we can't become mature. Growth is essential in the church. This is the true in society, the church. 
and his kingdom. We have been called into a new society in Christ, the church, God's kingdom, and into new Jerusalem, ultimately. We must become constructed and harmonized. If you think about it in a concept of time, we're now in the stage of church, next is his kingdom, and then finally, the new Jerusalem. In the eternal world, there isn't a concept of time, but even today, we can see kingdom and new Jerusalem in the church. In a small church movement by brethren church members in the 14th century in England, they insisted that the church is the concept of brothers, and they themselves were churches. Yet this is correct, but who were they called by? Someone shared the gospel with them, and that's how God's calling was started. With other people that share the gospel and listen, who could believe? Without people who could believe, how could the church be organized? The church was started from those who share the gospel, but those brothers think the church was born automatically. Without those who share the gospel, it's absolutely impossible. Fundamentally, the church is created by Christ. But how can the church be created by Christ? As Christ becomes the word of God, the church was created. Even though there may be Christ, if he cannot become the word of God, the church could not be created. Some brothers have Christ within themselves, but if the word cannot be expressed or revealed through him, and if Christ cannot transform into the word of God by incarnation, the church cannot be born. So here, the meaning of the messenger, the word of God, and without his words, the church cannot be constructed. If there are no messengers, the apostles, then the church could not be born. In our church, we don't have system, organization, or doctrines, so people have a tendency to despise and mistreat us. Who is the one who has the whole authority and who is the life of the church? Only Christ is the life of the church and only he can be the authority. Nothing else can be the true authority of the church. We have a history of hundreds of years. Some foolish people will listen to our church message and say, well, the Christian history, 2,000 years. What happened to the great churches in history? Why do you neglect history? Well, history, whether it's a long and short, it cannot be the authority of the church. In the world, they have longer histories and stronger organization. A long history cannot prove the true authority. In the world, if some organization has a long history, they have the authority. Whatever it may be, if they have a long history, they put meaning into this and allow to have authority. Even if it's a lie, if that lie is spoken to millions of people over and over again, over a long period of time, that lie can have the authority too. But in the kingdom of God, this is absolutely impossible. Countries that have long history can possess power and hold authority. But the kingdom of God is completely different from these countries. Christ is holding the mystery of the seven stars with his right hand. If a Roman Catholic priest violates their doctrines, it would be a serious problem. But if the priest opposed their system, this would be a challenge against their system. And they would mercilessly execute them or drive them out. At the same time, Protestants founded their churches 
on the basis of doctrines. If anybody despised their doctrines, they classified them as cult and excommunicate. If the church is lacking the ingredients of Jesus Christ, then the church is lacking authority. No matter how many people gather together, if they lack Jesus Christ, the only uh, they would have a worldly authority instead, and the church cannot have the true authority of the church. If we deeply think about the term church, then its meaning is against the world. The meaning of the church was called out and came out from the world. If they can be harmonized with the world, why do they have to come out from the world? Because they are separated from the world. This is the church. The concept of the church and the world are quite opposite. Ecclesia means they were called out from the world by the Lord. They were saved out of the world. For example, the Israelites who were enslaved in Egypt were brought or saved out of Egypt by Moses. This is the church. So the world and the church are quite the opposite. This is an important issue whether you love the world or you love the church. So the final battle is the kingdom of the world versus the church. They are faced against each other in New Jerusalem and the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel and New Jerusalem are separate societies. It's a war between two societies facing against each other. Who is the enemy that's facing Jesus Christ? He is Satan. Adam is facing against Christ. Satan is facing against God. And the world is facing against the church. If you love the world, we don't love the church. The authority of the church is Jesus Christ, and he should become our own life and the Lord. Even though there are seven churches, there is actually just one. In the concept of creation, the seven churches are just one church. The number seven came out of uh, by adding three with number four. In other words, three and four are added up, just as God and man were added up together, united and become one. If you look at the tree, it has no root. It has roots, rather, branches, leaves, flowers, fruits, and the trunk. But they are all included in one tree. Can we consider the branches separately from the tree? No. They're all included in one tree. Since the seven are aimed at one church, we can visualize this same picture with a golden lampstand. It's just one lampstand, but it has seven branches. There are seven lamps on the tip of that one lampstand. There are seven churches in the book of Revelation, but they are standing on one church, just like lamp stand. There are seven churches, so the seven churches are all aimed at one church. In worldly mathematics, if we add three and four, it equals seven. But in spiritual mathematics, if we add man and God, it's just one. If you visit an automobile assembly line, there are many auto parts. But when they are all used and assembled together, a single automobile is finished products. While driving a car, no one thinks about the 30,000 parts that are make up that one car. The parts do not become a car until they are perfectly assembled together, and only then can a car can be driven. If those parts are disassembled again, no longer it's a car. There are tires, rims, engine, 
suspension, bumpers, and lights. But those parts alone cannot be an automobile. No matter how expensive and excellent the parts may be, when you isolate those parts, nobody will call it an automobile. If a car looks like a piece of junk and is full of dents and scratches, but still runs, we can call it an automobile. Likewise, in the creation, everything is aimed to become one and perfectly mature being. The seven churches have different characteristics, but they have just one goal. Plants, birds, and fish are all different, but where are they aimed at? They're aimed at man, and that's why they're all one. The defects of a man and the tricks of Satan it may exist even in the church, but within those problems, there is one very unique thing, the united overcomers. That's why God seeks the overcomers. Even though the church is in a complicated situation, in reality, the church must have many problems. Though there's the problems with Satan and our humanity and... There's, there are many other defects and faults. God is looking for his overcomers, and in them there isn't any problems with Satan or humanity. The farmer is only interested in when it is time to harvest. These things are nothing to worry about. The farmers only say, I'm only interested in bringing the grains and fruits into my warehouse. We shouldn't waste our time getting hold of them or attached emotion. We should discard them with no attached feelings. The church is aimed at the kingdom, and the kingdom has a goal, reproducing winners. What is the purpose of our church today? We are here to produce the overcomers, the winners, the faithful grains that God is looking for. So we should think of ourselves as a rice paddy or a wheat field, which is cultivated by the farmer. At the present time, it may be a farm with grains, but in the future, it will be a warehouse full of grains. Traveling from the field to the warehouse and then to the dining table, the food is consumed and become the flesh and blood of the owner. We were in the field of God and then moved to his warehouse and finally we enter into God himself. As we are eating and sitting together, we can become one with God. The church's goal is for its members to become faithful grains and God's winners. Among the seven churches, they're called winners. The Lord is promising a gift for the winners from this church and that church. We can also consider that the church is the place where construction materials are produced. The church is the process of ore apt treatment that we can aim at becoming the finished product. We bring the ore from the mines and after it passes through several processes and treatment, it turns into the powder Within the powder, there are impurities that must be discarded. Likewise, within the church, there are many things that we should discard. In the kingdom, there's nothing to be discarded. But in the church, there are many things. After treatment, the power, powder is purified, and all we have to do is just put it into the furnace, then you will have the finished product. 
The church is the people who are saved from their sins and reborn in Christ. The people are the church, but not those from the world. Just because people gather together doesn't make it a church. We are a different kind of people because we are called out from the world. We can express that we are called out of the flesh and into the spirit or from the world into the church. But it's very hard to express accurately. We are called out of the world to the new world. St. John once said, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. So we cannot see the church with the physical eyes either. St. John didn't see Jesus with his physical eyes, but with the spiritual eyes. The Son of Man is the founder of the church. He's a man, but he must view through spiritual eyes. We can superficially look at our church brothers, but we cannot also look at them through our spiritual eyes. The people from his hometown refer to Jesus as a 30-year-old young man who is the son of the carpenter, Joseph. They're referring to him from the concept of flesh. But the people who saw him from the spiritual concept confessed he's the Lord of Christ, Lord and Christ, the Son of Man, the Son of God, and the Son of living God. In the same manner, when we call church brothers, we are referring to them in the spiritual concept. In the concept flesh, we cannot call them brothers. Jesus was wearing a long robe and his feet were like that of bronze glowing in a furnace. He was walking along the seven lampstands and he was also walking on the earth. He was sitting on the throne of heaven. At the same time, he was walking on the earth. The church cannot be created in heaven but it can be created by man who is walking on the earth. The church cannot be constructed without the Son of Man who is walking on the earth. If Jesus didn't walk on the street of the earth, he couldn't live together with us like he did with his disciples. And the church wouldn't have been constructed and founded. Specifically, one man visited the waterfront, the matter fisherman, and said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. In this specific incident, through this meeting, the church was born. So in the kingdom of heaven, there's a throne, and the Lord is sitting on it. The one who's sitting on the throne, his appearance is of Jasper and Canalian. His appearance looked like God, and the kingdom was constructed with that holy person. But the church was founded because the Son of Man walked on the earth. The church can be constructed by people who are working and walking on the earth. Through Jesus Christ, his apostles were born. Today, because of the brother walks the street of the world, the church can be founded. If you don't walk on the earth, the church cannot be founded. Jesus on the earth was the son of man because he was a man, but the church was founded by that son of man. The Lord of the church resides on the earth and he was still here today. If the Lord remained on his throne in heaven, the church couldn't be founded. Through his messengers, the Lord is walking on the earth. This is why the church can be founded. So without these messengers, the church cannot be founded. With the person who is on the throne in heaven, church could not be founded. But with the messengers walking on the earth, the church will be founded. This is the Son of Man viewed through spiritual eyes. 
So if we view them with spiritual eyes, we can see the messengers of the church, whoever they may be and how they walk. They are walking as witness of Jesus Christ. Those men are the messengers in the Bible, and we can see that they are the messengers of the seven churches. The church cannot be founded by one who is sitting on the throne of heaven alone, but by those who are walking on the street on the earth. We can only see them as messengers with our spiritual eyes. They are just regular people when viewed with physical eyes. They could be friends or family members because they are just regular people when viewed with physical eyes. But with the spiritual eyes, they are messengers of God. Those winners are led by the one who is sitting on the throne, and they are being led to the throne in heaven by the Lord. They are led to another world, and they reside in this different world, heaven. We have many limitations on earth, but in heaven it's limited world. So there are seven churches. They are confined to the Ephesian church. There was the Samarna church in the area of Samarna and the Pagamon church in the area of Pagamon. In each district there is a different churches. It's a concept of space but the winner have no such concept in the world, denominations are no longer necessary because there isn't limitation or area or space. They are definitely not winners. If they still have the barriers of walls and denominations among the winners, they will never use those terms. Suppose we are led to heaven, everyone is the same. If you fly high up to space, the broader and territory, the land of Korea and America no longer exist or are necessary. It's the people who draw the boundaries and limit things as their territory. But if you take the special aircraft and fly high into the air, then nobody can stop you. If you take a spaceship and fly higher into space, even North Korean people cannot stop, stop you because in space there aren't any borders in the same manner with the winners. There's no limitation of space. In fact, there are no limitation at all. When we say there aren't any limitations, there are also no problems. If the limitations disappear, so do all the problems, which means our physical body is limited by space. So all the problems related to our physical body will disappear too. If we enter into a larger space, such as Christ himself, there won't be any problems they will all disappear. The problems were all started in a small land and they argue it's my territory, it's your territory. This is why all the fightings started. Where's the territory of the mother or daughter-in-law? All the fighting is caused by, the, by this issue the Korean Peninsula is very small and investors try to invest money in their land. This causes the price of land and housing to rise rapidly. And the result caused problems. The reverse is also true when the land and housing prices drop rapidly. But if the land is large enough, the price the changes don't have such drastic impact. But before we become winners, we argue among ourselves which part of room is the best. We argue, fight, and struggle trying to snatch other people's rights. 
if we are able to become winners, we won't have any problems and we'll feel refreshed. If we become winners and move to a bigger area of land, we don't need to argue whether this is mine and that is yours because we don't need to argue or fight anymore. If your land is large enough, you don't have time to visit all your territory, and you don't need to pay any attention to anyone else either. We won't become greedy and envy the land and territory of other people. We have many problems because we live on Earth, but we won't stay on Earth forever. We are facing moving and proceeding toward a high place where we can become winners. In the church, we eat and grow up. As we continue to eat and grow up, winning means to keep growing. In order to have the strength to grow up, we need to have a lot of food. Growing up is first priority. If you are still a baby, you have no strength at all. So winning is growing. As we face serious difficulties or hardship, we need to digest them so we can become stronger. We prefer to avoid trouble. We want everything to be peaceful and calm. But since we live on the earth and in the church, there are always problems. With life on earth, we'll always have problems, but growth and maturity can be achieved quickly under negative situation. Trees grow up in a negative situation. If the trees overcome the negative environment, they will become very big tree. But if they fail, the tree will wither and die. When we become uh, overcomers and digest all the negative situation, we can grow up quickly, but in a good situation, it's hard for us to become winners. All environments and situations are appropriate for us to grow up if we are spiritually enlightened. Everything becomes positive. So if we realize that even in a bad situation, God has placed me there so I can grow up and become a certain character. If we have this eye-opening experience, our life will become very successful. But even in this negative situation, if they receive an eye-opening experience, they can become mature and rise up to God's throne in heaven. Without grace, we cannot be enlightened or receive an eye-opening experience. If we receive this enlightenment, we then realize that this is a very appropriate situation. If you are sitting at the dining table with delicious food in front of us, but if we don't have a strong appetite, then it doesn't look very delicious. If we have a strong appetite, but the food may not be very good, it still looks delicious. Which situation do you think is better? One has no appetite, but there's plenty of delicious food, or where the person has a strong appetite and the food may not be very good. Which one do you think it is luckier? I would choose the latter. I would rather have a strong appetite and stomach, even if the food may not be very good. I want to be a man like a second person. A true blessing would be to have a strong appetite or stomach no matter what type of food is in front of us. I wish for all of us to have strong spiritual stomach and strong appetite. Whatever God may give us, we'll enjoy that food. I hope we become spiritually mature and be able to digest everything easily, and then we can give thanks to God daily. God may give us negative situation, but he has his reasons which are very appropriate. 
I may think my environment isn't appropriate for me, but God says this is appropriate for you. We are not bright eyesighted people, but God has extremely bright eyesight. I was involved in a big arguments and religious conflicts. God put me in this situation, and I discovered hidden fighting temperaments inside of myself. I discovered an internal reality about myself because of this negative experience. I don't trust myself anymore now. Now I trust God 100%. If I try to trust myself, I'll be destroyed. Since I don't trust myself, I have no other choice but to trust God 100%. When God puts us in a certain environment, we don't fully understand about it, but in his view, it's very appropriate for us. Why does God put me in uh, my situation right now? Because it's most appropriate for me. If we trust God, he will never put us in a place where we'll be destroyed. He puts us into best position. But the problem is we can't make good use of it because we don't fully understand that position. If he can't make good use of it, we could be destroyed. Millions of millions of people trust him because they confess that God knows me far better than I know myself. God has put me in more appropriate place than I possibly ever thought. He thought, his thoughts and mind are much bigger than mine. That's why our seniors and ancestors trusted him. They understood and received the good result. God is trustworthy. That's why they instilled their beliefs onto their descendants that they should believe and trust in him. We cannot judge everything with our narrow-mindedness, the situation given are most appropriate for us. If you receive this enlightenment, this is a true spiritual gift and the biggest blessing. We shouldn't pray to God and ask that he would provide a, or fill up our dining table with all kinds of food. It would be wiser to pray that he would make our spiritual appetite become stronger. To have a strong spiritual appetite is more desirable than to have strong stomach or a strong physical appetite. God always give us the most appropriate gift and assignment. If I pay the price, I can be upgraded one step closer toward God and becoming an overcomer. If I become an overcomer, then spiritually I'll go one step higher. And as we go higher and higher, our views, standing point, and territory will become broader. The birds who fly higher can see further. If we fly higher, then it will see further. And our territory will become broader. People would complain. Why do I have to pay the price? If you pay the price, you'll be resurrected and become an overcomer. But if you don't, you cannot win in a spiritual warfare. Without paying the price, you cannot get your freedom. If you want to be free from Egypt, you have to pay the price of little lamb. To be free from the prison, you have to pay a large sum of money for bail. God always sends a messenger and let me pay the price, but he never talks directly to me. During the Old Testament time, God talked directly to his people from heaven. But in modern days, he talks through his messengers. People around me can give me a problem, but through these people, God makes me peaceful. To be an overcomer, God is leading us to his side. He wants to call me to his own world. God is constructing New Jerusalem. 
with these excellent materials so that we can enjoy this beautiful and perfect world. God's beautiful castle, New Jerusalem, is our final destination. Thank you. Hallelujah. May God bless every one of you. Thank you again. Thank you.